Welcome back to the channel guys and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a water liquid simulation into a glass. So I am going to be showing you how to model this, how to set up the scene and we'll even um, touch some basic materials. Um, nothing fancy as you can see here. Um, obviously the main thing here is just to show you how to set up a sort of simulation like a glass and some water flowing into it. We'll also be looking at keyframing so we can tell the inflow exactly when to start and exactly when to stop so we can fill our glass up exactly the way we want to. So if you want to learn how to do this in Blender 4.2, keep watching. I did do an older video on this that I think is probably a little bit better. Uh, I think I explained that th um, things really well in there. I took my time a little bit more, but that video is a bit older and some of the things have changed now. So it's always good to have an updated um, tutorial on these sort of things. So let's jump into Blender 4.2 and make a water liquid simulation into a glass. So the new scene opened up in Blender. We're gonna select all the default objects and just press delete. We're then gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our mesh options and add in a cylinder. And now we're just gonna go into edit mode by pressing tab. And if you go into your front orthographic view, you can go G and then press Z. So G followed by Z and holding in control or command, you can snap and you're gonna snap it till it's on this red line here, which is gonna you know, be where the floor is, okay? So all we have to do is just select this bottom face and go S to scale it. Now, obviously, depending on the style of glass you're going for, you could make it um, wider, um, you can kind of make it smaller or kind of somewhere in between, completely up to you. But I'm gonna go something like this and then I'm gonna select the top face and go G, maybe move that up just a little bit, something like that. And then I'm gonna go E to extrude that top face like so. And I'm gonna go X and I'm gonna delete that face. Then we're gonna to go to our edge select option Shift Alt left click on this edge to loop select it and we're gonna go Control B to create a bevel. And I'm gonna roll the middle mouse button once just to add an extra segment like so and then just click. And then what we're gonna do, I think just go to our face select and just select this bottom face. Let's go I to inset this and go G, Z, just move it up a bit and then I to inset it again. And that just kind of creates a more realistic looking bottom to the glass as you generally don't have a perfectly flat bottom. Otherwise your glass wouldn't sit perfectly um, flat. So we're also gonna come over here, control R and then roll the middle mouse button, add in some segments. Let's go with this many, okay. And then we're gonna press A to select everything. We're gonna go E to extrude, right click. And now let's go Alt S and scale out along the normals and let's give this some thickness like so. Now, another thing we want to do is go over here to our overlays and enable, or I guess our edit mesh overlays. And we want to come here and just check normals. All of these little blue lines should be sticking outwards. If they're not, for example, if you're seeing something like this, what you want to do is just go Alt N and just recalculate the outside so they're all sticking out. That's going to be really important. We're then going to go over back into object mode. We're gonna right click and go shade smooth and let's go to modifiers, add modifier and let's go search and type in sub and let's get a subdivision surface. And now it's looking really nice, pretty cool. Um, one more thing you could do, this is optional. Um, I'm not gonna do it now, but you could always grab this bottom bunch of faces and then with proportional editing kind of just move it up because in reality, uh, Glass um, has a thicker base at the bottom, but that's not something I would get too too worried about when doing this. Um, I mean, I might move it up a little bit, but that's really optional. You don't have to do that. Um, yeah, so let's just go ahead and go Shift A now in object mode, add in a plane. We're gonna go S to scale that guy up. And then we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in under our mesh options, a UV sphere and we'll move that guy up and then we'll go S to scale it down. And this is gonna be the thing where our water flows out of. So we're gonna just maybe scale it probably about this big. And then it's very important once you've scaled it in object mode, you wanna go control A and just apply that scale. And let's also right click and go shade smooth. And what we wanna do then is select our glass and we're gonna create an interaction domain because even though we can add uh, effect an effector to this glass, what's gonna happen is it'll still sometimes come through. So to be 100% sure, we're gonna build an extra domain. This is really simple. You're just gonna select a face at the bottom of the glass. 
Then go Control plus to grow to selection and keep going till you've selected the whole inside, like so. As you can see, we've got a whole thing selected. I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate and right click to let go. So now this is its own separate object. And we're gonna go P and separate that selection. Tab back out and now you can see this is what we have. So we're gonna get rid of that subdivision surface modifier for that. And inside of edit mode, again, of this new um, duplication, we're gonna go A to select everything and we're gonna go Alt S and just scale it out a little bit along the normals. And then we're gonna go to our modifiers, add modifier and let's go search and type in solidify. Give it one and let's just go and give it some thickness. Like so, we're gonna go back into object mode and we're gonna grab this guy here and just apply that solidify. And let's go over to our object properties and under our visibility, I guess maybe our viewport display. Yeah, there we go. We're gonna go to display as and make it wire. And up here, we'll double click on it. We can see where it's selected. Let's just call it interaction outside. Call it whatever you want. Um, just so we know what it is. And I'm gonna turn that off for the render. And that's it for now. So let's start setting up our physics. We're gonna first of all start by selecting this sphere over here. I'm gonna go over to our physics properties. We're gonna give it a fluid. We're gonna come here to the type and we're gonna call it flow, make it flow. And the flow type, we wanna make that liquid. And then we want to come here to the um, flow behavior. Currently it's geometry, we want to make it inflow. And just in case you're curious as to what the geometry is, if we made that geometry, this itself will be like a liquid and it'll just fall. It won't be continually, continually producing more um, like flow. Um, that'll make more sense as we get into the tutorial. We're then going to select this effector here, this outside one. We're going to go to our fluid, Let's give it a fluid. Go to the type, we're gonna make it effector. It should be set as a collision under the effector type and make sure is planar is enabled. And now we're just gonna go shift A, we're gonna to go to our mesh options and add in a cube. This is gonna be our domain. So let's just tab into edit mode. We're gonna go G, Z and move it up till it's sitting on the floor. Then we're gonna tab back out, we're gonna go S to scale it and then S, Z, scale it up a bit. Something like this. And we're just gonna go control A and apply that scale because we scaled it in object mode. So this is gonna be our domain. And with that now done, we're gonna go and give it under our physics, a fluid as well. The type is gonna be domain. And when we come to the domain type, make it liquid. So now if we um, go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see we have this uh, liquid flowing in here. Now obviously at the moment it looks like chocolate goop um, it looks more like a very viscous thing that's not making contact here. And that's just coming down to the lack of resolution. If we actually come here to the resolution and make it um, something like 64, and we always want to go up with multiples of two. So if we make it something like 64, go to frame one and we hit the space bar, you can see it's now very slow, but it's giving us a much better result. Now that's still something we can bump up even more, but if we were just to keep playing this anyway, it would just overflow. And by the way, just for now, with this domain still selected, I'm just gonna go down and just this un unable the mesh here, because for some reason in Blender 4.2, that's enabled by default. So if you now go to frame one and we're just going to wireframe, we can see um, it's simulating here without that mesh there at the moment. Um, but we don't want this to flow continually. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come here to our end frame value. Let's make this 150 frames. And let's just say we want the simulation to last a certain amount of time. So what we're gonna do is to start, we're gonna select our domain and we're gonna go over to our domain type at the top. And just underneath there, we're gonna change the time scale, make it two, so it flows a bit differently. And for now, let's just make this 32 so we can work a little bit faster. Um, and we're gonna go to frame one and we're gonna grab our outflow here. And we essentially wanna say from maybe like frame one, we wanna make sure that it says use flow. And we're gonna come here and click on this little dot. That's gonna give it an, a keyframe for that property. And then let's just maybe come to something like frame 80. And then let's just 
go ahead give that another keyframe and then let's just go to the frame next to it frame 81 turn off the use flow and then click to add another keyframe so now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar we're going to see that it's only going to fill up to frame 80. now that's overfilled but i think what you'll find and i'm just going to save this by the way just um, before we do this once we go over here and grab our domain and we take this resolution up so if i go to like 64 for example and then go back to frame one and it's not going to fill up as much i'm just going to quickly see once it gets to frame 80 how full it is okay so here you can see going all the way up to frame 80 it just finishes in time but it still overflows a little bit so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to grab this um, use flow and i'll just come here and just grab these two end keyframes and let's go g and just move them down to 70. and what are we going to do we're going to go to frame one and we're going to come here grab our domain we're going to come to the resolution and let's make that 128. and then we're going to come down and we're going to enable mesh and we're also going to go to our cache we're going to select this file here i'm just going to go to my desktop and I'm going to create a file and call it cache and i'm going to click on it and go accept so we just have somewhere for it to go and i only want it to cache i'm going to go with just 120 frames so the simulation will kind of the particles will stop moving after 120 frames I'm going to come to the type here and make it all. I'm going to go to is resumable. I'm going to make sure to save. And now what we need to do is just click on bake all and it'll bake this. Now this might take a bit of time, but just go ahead and click on that. And once this is done, I'll come back and show you what we have. And it is now done caching. Um, and this is the result that we have. There we go. Pretty cool. Um, you can see some little drops splashed out here over the side. Um, you could, you know, rerun it and place things a little bit differently. I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. I think um, this looks actually fine for what we're trying to do. So let's just organize it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and grab the outside um, interactor here. I'm just going to go M, new collection, and just call it junk. Just to get out of the way, I'm going to go and create that. And then I'm just going to come here, turn that off for the render and hide it. We don't need to see that. And now I'm also going to select the ground here. Go to my front view. I'm just going to scale that on the X a bit. And let's just make a nice backdrop. So I'm going to select this back edge, maybe move it back a bit, extrude it up and grab this edge, control B to bevel it. Anything simple like that and just give it a smooth shading. Then in the front view, you can just go shift A and add in a camera. And you can place your camera wherever you want. I'm just going to obviously go from the front here. I think that's just a little bit simpler. So something like that. There we go. And I'm going to go to my render engine, change it to cycles. And under the render here, I'm going to make the max samples 50. You could go higher, but that's what I'm going to be doing. And then I'm just going to go shift A. I'm going to add in an area light. Have it coming from the side. I'm going to go ahead, give it a strength of 300. And I'm going to increase the size. And now I'm going to go Z and go rendered. And now I can really see the lighting here. So I might just go Shift D, duplicate another one. Have it kind of coming off from the side a little bit here, like so. And then maybe one kind of coming from the front. There we go. And I'll bump that one up to like 800. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So now let's grab our glass. Let's get our um, materials. We're going to go new and let's call it glass. We're gonna go over here to our transmission. Let's make the weight one. And let's bring that roughness down to like 0 0.04, 0 0.05. And then let's grab our liquid here that's coming out. Let's go new and let's go give it a base color. I'm just gonna make it blue and I'm gonna to go to the transmission, give it a weight of one and I'm gonna bring that roughness way down like so obviously you can make this whatever color you want um you know be as creative or as uncreative as you want go ahead and then i'm just going to let it play and that's looking pretty good um so now let's just also go and grab a camera i'm just going to go to my camera settings enable depth of field and I'm select the glass and i'm going to bring this f-stop value down 
Now I'm going to grab the background. I'm going to give that a material. Just bring it kind of down a little bit and then bring the roughness just down slightly. Maybe I'll take it up. I might take it up. There we go. I'm really just experimenting here at this point. And I might change the focal length of the camera. And then once you have that done, you can always go ahead and do more light duplication. So I always like to add some lights kind of coming from the back just to add a bit of rim lighting, but those I'll turn way down in strength. So kind of like from the side here. But honestly, when it comes to lighting, you could spend all day on it. Um, but yeah, just find something, something that you like. I might have the camera coming from a bit more of an angle. There we go. And now we have our simulation here, basic simulation. So if you want to render this out, you could just go to your output, select a destination somewhere in the computer, go accept, and then just change this file format to FFmpeg video. Under the encoding, you can make the container an MP4, and then you just go render and you render out the animation. But for now, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you guys next time for another one.